running out of reasons to stay alive and desperately trying to find new ones. Running out of reasons to stay alive and desperately trying to find new ones. Stuck in this constant cycle of not having the drive to get things done, so you don't, and then having to play catch up on everything. This can be anything from schoolwork, job, housework, keeping up with family and friends. I am always apologizing for my little disappearing ex and eventually there are just no more excuses or jokes you can use to get out of it. I have lost tons of friends because I just ghost everyone. It's easier to burn that bridge quickly instead of continually apologizing for doing the same thing. Additionally, I always think I'm going to kill myself so there is no need to go into work, I'll just be dead soon, but then I don't kill myself and still need to work so that's a big oopsie fucking daisy. It all sucks. The wasted potential. On my good days I get so much done. It's hard not to think about how much I could have accomplished if I always felt like I do on my good days. Edit. Thanks for all the replies guys. I honestly didn't think so many people also thought about this. I don't really have any advice or wise words but I do know that life can bring better things your way. Even if you don't see it right now. I've gone from living a comfortable life to losing everything, getting some of it back to then living in a shitty apartment that was infested with roaches and rats and back to living an okay life. We can succeed in spite of our mental illnesses. When you have people who care about you, there is no such thing as suffering alone. It's a double-edged sword. It's good to have people who care about you when you don't. But that means that your actions affect them even if you don't want them to. You disappear, it hurts them. You die, it hurts them. You talk with them and they worry. Even when you think you're in control, you can hurt them before you even realize you lost control. And they'll forgive you because they're your friends, but you will never forgive yourself. When there are people that care about you, you aren't allowed to just give up no matter how much you're suffering. When you do give up, you just end up hating yourself even more all while in pain. You have to constantly choose between your own pain and the people you love. The pity and lack of autonomy people give me. I have bipolar, and the people in my life will excuse my actions when I'm being a jerk because I didn't do it in my right mind. I can see taking it into account, but to completely excuse it voids any personal autonomy or responsibility I have. Outside of psychosis, I choose to be a jerk during my spirals, I see the same facts, but I do not care. My partner tolerates the spirals because I've worked on erasing common triggers for them from my life and on ways to calm myself down before I get to the point of no return. I love him for that. Maybe I don't deserve his patience and understanding, but I appreciate it enough to make sure that I'm not abusing that leeway. But his understanding doesn't make it okay. Past boyfriends, friends, and family members have brushed it under the rug because it was just the mental illness speaking. They infantilized me in the name of kindness. It's the absolute worst part for me, and not least because it's so tempting to excuse my own behavior for the same reasons and fall back into bad habits. The loneliness. For example, for a long time I struggled with depression, I'm medicated now so I'm doing a lot better. Every day I felt less than worthless. I felt like everything was wrong because of me. My brain constantly told me to kill myself. It was awful. Every other second I would get thoughts of putting a gun to my head. It didn't help that my dad was verbally and emotionally abusive. And I said to my mom some things that make me sad to this day. The worst thing I said to her was that there was some problem I can't remember and I said that the solution was to shoot my brains out. She was very concerned and sad for me. However, this tale has a happy ending. I finally got medicated and now I'm happy most of the time. My dad also got the help he needed and we repaired our relationship. So if anyone is struggling right now, I want you to know that there is always hope. You're not alone in your struggle and there are many people to help you. Dot. Wondering what it's like to be normal without that mental illness. When you are ill you really have no concept of what it's like to not be ill. It becomes so normal then you question if you really are ill sometimes. People hide it so well too so that you think normal people are better or feel better but who knows they might be even worse than you. Case in point every woman I ever dated was wonderful. For about 3 months when I saw the normal person mask fall off and saw someone much worse than I ever was. It made me question even more if I was really bipolar. Spoiler alert 3 doctors recently all said no when 5 said yes when I was an angsty teenager. Apparently they handed out bipolar diags like candy in the early 2000s according to one doctor I saw, 
Great test to tell if you are really bad off or not. Spend a night in jail or a nuthouse. You'll see what real crazy is. Even if you are depressed or anxious you will see someone 10x worse than you probably and it'll give you some perspective. You'll think you are depressed and want to die until you are faced with death and people who are trying to kill you. Just a note I got finally put on Celexa and it saved my life. The doctor saw I was having anxiety issues and wanted to try an SSRI to correct my serotonin. I can drink coffee again. Being stuck. Stagnation is my biggest enemy. While the world around me keeps moving, I feel like I just exist in a space where time does not exist and nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, matters. You live in a bubble. The most difficult part is people succeeding, reaching their goals, and having great moments in their lives while you are stuck in this bubble. It is easy to sink into self-pity, and then spiral down even further. Sometimes, I can't feel but mourn for the person I could have been if I did not have this goddamn depression and anxiety tearing at me. Having to wonder if I'm faking and can actually be happy or not even though I'm clinically diagnosed. People faking things all the time start making me feel like a fraud too. I got severe tardy teeth dyskinesia or whatever the first letter is called from taking Prozac. I was pissed, I've had to walk out of college classes just because I had a big tick and people noticed and I was embarrassed. People on TikTok faking ticks made me wonder if other people thought mine were fake too. Then I convinced myself every so often that they were and I'd concentrate on something really hard to make them go away. They did not. Same with my health problems. Same with my depression, ADHD, and anxiety. I watch people fake it, think maybe I'm faking too, end up making problem worse than it was by pretending it isn't there. Running out of reasons to stay alive and desperately trying to find new ones. Or maybe begging for help from loved ones but being ignored or cast aside like they don't care but you know when you actually do it they'll say the good oh I didn't see it coming, I wish there was something I could have done. Like alright, Chad, when I was crying beside you begging for help you didn't even offer supportive words. You saw it coming a mile away so stop being sad I'm gone. They don't care while you need help but suddenly they care when it's too late. I don't know. Man, it's all pretty bad tbh. The constant battles you fight in your mind, the mental breakdowns, just living. Being alive not only causes mental anguish but your physical body deteriorates. Memory loss, heart problems. You know. It sucks that your mind being in pain can cause actual physical illnesses and problems. They always say you'll get better but it never does. As every days pass I find more and more reasons to not be here. The only thing that gets better are my chances of not making it past 30. For me it's the inability to trust myself. Am I upset because the situation warrants being upset or am I catastrophizing? Do I actually like this thing or is this a temporary hyperfixation? Am I making a sound decision on what I'm about to do or am I in a manic case? I have absolutely no proof, so was I actually abused for years or did I imagine it? I'm lucky that my family became extremely supportive after I called one day to tell them I was signing myself into a psych unit so that I couldn't follow through with my planned suicide attempt. However everything I do is now blamed on my mental illness. In a bad mood? I must have stopped taking my medications. Going on a date? I must be manic and seeking risky sex. Don't feel like leaving the house for a day? I'm slipping into a depression and absolutely must leave the house to fight through the symptoms. Forget something in an isolated incident? I need to call my psychiatrist because my medications aren't working right. Every time they blame an unrelated behavior or instance on mental illness, I second guess myself and trust myself less. If I try to address this with them? I'm not being accepting of my illnesses and limitations in life, of course. The amount of people who say they understand and yet display zero empathy, or say everyone feels down anxious sometimes. There is a difference between feeling down or feeling nervous and depression and anxiety. Until you've actually needed real treatment for mental health issues you really have no scope to judge. I am thankfully a lot better now than I was in my 20s. I have a stable job that I really enjoy, a wonderful girlfriend and although I have bad days, they're days. And I see them as an opportunity to have a better day tomorrow. Even though I went through a lot of treatment and therapy, what that did more than anything else was get me ready to get better. What actually helped the most from there was learning about and reading philosophy. The major thing I tell people is that they can't expect the same thing to work for any two different people. Because people are all different, 
have different needs and different issues that cause their mental illness. People look at you differently, if I tell someone about my condition and I either hear oh that's not that bad just change your mindset as if it's something that can be easily fixed or people look down on me like I'm a child that can't think for himself. I know for a fact that in job interviews when they ask if I have any medical conditions if I mention what I have I am much less likely to get the job but if I lie and say I don't then later when they find out I'll get in trouble. It's a constant lose-lose situation. And they might not say it's because of my illness because then they might get in trouble from HR so they'll make up some other bullshit but I'll know the real reason. I can't keep a job because of my condition which in and of itself makes it hard to find a job because the recruiter is like well it seems as if you have trouble keeping a job. I try so hard and work so hard but it feels like none of that effort will ever mean anything. I'm expecting to eventually either end up homeless or kill myself and I'm not sure which is more likely but I think the one will probably lead to the other. PSA, mental illnesses are real illnesses and not a mindset. I didn't choose to be this way. I will always be this way. And if it was a choice why the fuck would I choose to be unsociable or not the right fit for the company or whatever other bullshit term? Why would I choose to feel like a burden on society and on the ones around me? Not being mentally healthy doesn't mean that I don't know what is real, what is happening around me, or that I can't pick up on it when people are talking shit about me with an earshot. I'm not stupid, at least not entirely. It's so frustrating. I am a human person, I just want to be treated like one. Remaining in the victim mindset. Acknowledging your past is crucial to start healing, but holding onto it instead of closing those chapters is the worst thing you can do. I speak from experience. For the longest time it was easier to be the victim of the deck I was dealt in life, make excuses, and use it to avoid accountability. However, there comes a time when you are tired of being tired and wrapped up in the aftermath and fog of an illness. And I wish the time for me came sooner. But once I realized that I needed to put work into myself and love for myself, my life completely changed. When I accepted the fact that there is no cure or someone coming to save me, everything changed. The person that is going to save you is you, so let me tell you how I did it. Start getting a minimum of 7 hours of sleep, drinking as close to a gallon of water a day, eating whole foods and as close to a single ingredient source foods as possible, ditching sugar, taking a multivitamin, getting outside, the sun is your friend, getting active again in any way possible, 10k step stay is a great place to start, reduce eliminate drugs and alcohol, if you are on meds, consult your provider first. When I was on mine, I realized the side effects were not only way worse, but I was on extremely high dosages that I didn't need to be on. Those are the steps that I took to get me out of my grave I dug myself. Not everything happened at once either. Make it a process, not a destination. Establish healthy habits for yourself. Keep a journal of sorts. If you don't know how, find those who do. Rally a support group like your life depends on it, because in an essence, it does. People need people. And if you have positive and healthy people around you, you will find yourself becoming the same. Also social media is not your friend. Reduce your screen time like you would with your kids, unless you let them have free reign to which, shame on you for melting your kid's brain. When you reroute your dopamine needs to practicing a skill or art or exercising, or socializing with people IRL, social media quickly becomes a joke and a massive waste of time. This was a long rant, but I hope whoever needed to hear this starts on loving themselves today. Well that's all for the video today. I hope you enjoyed it and as always have an amazing day.